Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Professor Busingama. I'm the Deputy Vice Chancellor and Head of the College of Health Sciences. On behalf, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor and Principal, Professor Nana Poku, it gives me a great pleasure to welcome you to the inaugural lecture of Professor Rajesh Kapomath. The Vice Chancellor conveys his congratulations and best wishes to Professor Rajeshka Kapomath. The Registrar, Dr. Kathy Cleland, also conveys her apologies and congratulates Professor Kapomath on his promotion and thanks him for his contribution to the discipline of pharmaceutical sciences. I would like to acknowledge the following guests uh, this afternoon. Members of council who may be present, members of the Executive Management Committee, members of Senate, our inaugural this afternoon, Professor Rajeshka Kapomath, family and friends of Professor Rajeshka Kapomath, academics and professional staff, students, alumni and distinguished guests. A special welcome to guests from universities and organizations within South Africa, the African continent and across the globe. And inaugural lectures form part of the university's public lecture series and may only be presented by newly appointed full professors who have been appointed in the academic schools and centers. Inaugural lectures present an opportunity for showcasing the exciting and groundbreaking research and teaching being carried out by professors in our university. Each lecture represents a significant milestone in an academic's career, providing official recognition of their promotion or appointment to full professorship. These lectures are furthermore an ideal opportunity for new professors to introduce themselves and to present an overview of their own contribution to their field, to academic peers, students, and research collaborators. Inaugural lectures are also a platform for celebrating a professor's academic achievements with his or her family, friends, mentors, and colleagues. Distinguished guests, it's my pleasure to now introduce the Dean and Head of School of Health Sciences, Professor Katuchelo Pesi Mashife, who will now formally introduce the inaugurant, Professor Rajesh Kapomat. Professor Pesi Mashire, over to you, and thank you, colleagues. Thank you very much, Professor Busisi Wenama, um, and good afternoon, colleagues. Professor Rajsheka Karpumath is a full professor in the discipline of pharmaceutical sciences. He is also the academic leader of research for the School of Health Sciences. He obtained a Bachelor of Pharmacy from KLE Society College of Pharmacy in India in 2000. He then pursued a Master of Pharmaceutical Chemistry from Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences, Bengaluru in 20, 2004. In 2013, he obtained his PhD from the School of Chemistry and Physics, University of KwaZulu-Natal. Upon completing his postgraduate studies in 2004, he was accepted as a research scholar at the renowned National Chemistry Laboratory in Pune, India. He dedicated his time to further his understanding of tRNA structural and conformational aspect and the importance of modified neutrocyte in tRNA at various positions. His research findings were presented at national and international conferences, contributing to the scientific community's collective knowledge. In 2010, while pursuing his doctoral studies at UKZN, Professor Karpumath joined the Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry as a lecturer and ascended to senior lecturer in 2015, associate professor in 2018, and full professor in 2022. He has had an illustrious career in independent research in, since 2014, having established the Synthetic and Medicinal Chemistry Research Group at UKZN. His unwavering commitment to securing institutional, national, and international grants has led to the establishment of, of a well-equipped drug 
Discovery Laboratory at UKZN. Through this, he has hosted numerous international postgraduates, academics and researchers from Africa and Asia under various exchange programs, making the laboratory a center of excellence in drug delivery research. Further, he has successfully established research collaborations globally with researchers from institutes and universities of high repute. Professor Karpurmath's research has focused on target-based drug design and synthesis, methodology development, and nanomaterial-based electrochemical biosensors. His research group has published over 160 peer-reviewed articles in international journals, six book chapters, one book, and two patents, which is a test testament to his dedication and hard work. He has supervised 42 postgraduate students and 12 postdoctoral research scholars since 2014. His research group comprises eight masters, 15 PhDs, and four postdoc research scholars. Professor Karpromath has been recognized as one of the top researchers and appeared in UKZN's top 30 researchers list in 2016, 2021, and 2022. His national ranking of 27th for scholarly output in applied chemistry from 2018 to 2022, according to Scopus, is a testament to his contributions to medicinal chemistry. Professor Karpumath has been invited as a speaker at several national and international conferences and workshops. He is an NRF South Africa C2 rated scientist since 2021. He is currently a health science panel member of the National Research Foundation and was appointed as an expert reviewer by the Water Research Commission, South Africa, Medicinal Research Council in the UK, South African Health Product Regulatory Authority, Promotions Application from RMIT University in Australia, National Development and Research and Innovation Office, and the government of Hungary. Professor Karpumath is a member of the American Chemical Society, the Royal Chemical Society, and the South African Chemical Society. Ladies and gentlemen, pharmaceutical chemists possess a unique expertise in designing and synthesizing new molecules that have the potential to revolutionize the field of medicine. Their work involves evaluating these molecules and exploring their interaction with biological systems to develop new treatments that can improve people's lives. It is clear from the data that small heterocycles that play a significant role in medicinal chemistry, making up 98% of the top 200 marketed drugs for treating and managing both infectious and non-infectious diseases. In his inaugural lecture, titled Mighty Minions, Unveiling the Power of Small Molecules in Medicinal Marvels. Professor Karpumoth will share his career journey as a bioorganic chemist and its application to the chemical biology of disease. He will discuss his latest research in drug delivery, which focuses on developing potent molecules via molecular hybridization and new eco-friendly methodologies for synthesizing versatile building blocks. This research can potentially improve the effectiveness of treatments for various diseases. I now invite Professor Karpumath to deliver his inaugural lecture. Thank you. Is it, uh, is, sorry. Are you able to see? So, go back to here. Yeah, we're live. Okay. Great. 
good afternoon everyone and uh, thank you for the kind introduction by the dvc uh, and the dean of college of health sciences my heartfelt gratitude to my colleagues and friends and researchers who are attending in person over here and also uh, remotely it is really an honor to be presenting in front of some of the distinguished uh, researchers here who are as colleagues as well as also internationally known so i will be taking you through my journey of uh, my career as a researcher as an academic where i started and how i have come how, how i have reached here thus far so my title of uh, today's title is mighty minions unraveling the power of small molecules i believe in small molecules because we are heading towards miniaturization everything is nano and small molecules have been doing wonders before i start my lecture our uh, inaugural lecture i would like to pay homage to the two greatest souls that walk this earth that is nelson mandela madiba known as madiba madiba and mahatma gandhi the reason i acknowledge them is not that just because they are great they are great i acknowledge them because of their perseverance their um human humane nature and bringing equality among humans and uh, upholding the human values and the greatest leaders who took everyone together and what we south africans call as ubuntu not just alone but taking the entire nation together people of all walks of life race creed taking them together along with them thus my homage to them and thus i begin my journey sh sharing my journey with you guys i was born in india in uh, southern part of india uh, known as karnataka uh, so karnataka this is the southern most part of india and one of the province karnataka and karnataka is we can say twice as big as uh, kwazul natal but 1/10 the uh, size of uh, south africa so in karnataka i was basically uh, born in uh, in hubli that is the twin city hubli and dharwad so i was born in hubli on 2nd november 1975 and i did my entire education like i mean to say post graduate and graduate undergraduate and post graduate in keli college of pharmacy belgam that is northern karnataka and finally we settled in bangalore uh, that is the southern part of karnataka so a beautiful uh, place a beautiful state uh, and uh, and it has its own tradition and uh, language and as you know the india is a really a big country so every uh, 200 300 kilometers you travel you find different languages cultures and so on so within the state in this small province there are several languages several traditions and cultures so it's a very diverse within itself taking you a little bit further in where i'm i was born in belgam and where my family roots come from actually come from it's around approximately uh, 60 kilometers from belgam uh, that is uh, a small village called korvikop korvikop village so this is the village where i was uh, where my family comes from and this is the aerial view of that and this is the aerial view of my house my ancestral house where currently my brother resides and takes care of the farm and this is the school where i actually started Sorry. my schooling uh, prof kapoor i appreciate screen your presentation sure okay sorry is it uh, visible now no sorry 
ओके जिस Sorry about that. Uh, am I visible now? Yes, it's visible. Okay. If you can put it on 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 a slideshow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is it visible now? Uh, thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, so as I was talking, where I actually I actually come from is. a small village called Korikop and this is the aerial view of that and this is my house and this is where i went to school early days of my school that is these are the two buildings where exactly we i started my schooling as grade what we call it as grade double not not until first standard and believe me uh, this was one room and uh, everyone would like first second third standard Uh, all in one room and one teacher teaching and that's how we started yet with low uh, minimalistic this one uh, facilities the life was then very beautiful and i really enjoyed and i still have very beautiful memories of my village growing up so these are my farms which my brother currently takes care of and it is an, on the banks of river malaprabha a beautiful uh, malaprabha uh, river malaprabha going further my timeline as i said i was born in hubli karnataka but i never stayed in karnataka for long as from karnataka i moved to chota muri in jharkhand that is uh, sorry let me use the laser pointer uh, here at jharkhand all the way across maybe few thousand kilometers and then in 1979 to 80 we returned back to uh, karnataka because my father wanted to start Uh, uh a small company an oil milling company and uh, from there but things did not materialize so we went again back to uh delhi that is capital of india that is coming back to delhi here then from delhi we went to orissa that is uh, uh orissa here orissa that is uh, damanjodi a very remote tribal area and from there we went to mumbai that is another uh the financial capital of india from mumbai in 1988 to 1991 i came to ashwapuram another remote place uh in telangana the current telangana or uh andhra pradesh and from there i moved to its capital of that uh, state that is hyderabad a metropolitan city and from there again i moved to uh mumbai financial hub and then back from there my family moved to jamnagar and surat and back to bangalore but i carried on with my post graduate and undergraduate and post graduate studies uh, in belgami that is karnataka so may 2 to december 2003 uh, we came back and settled in bengaluru uh, the current bengaluru and then in 2004 to 2006 i was in pune maharashtra that is i went to do my uh research i was appointed as a researcher over there so as you can see i have traveled length and breadth of india basically and i have studied believe me i have studied in 16 different 15 to 16 different schools and most of my summer vacations would go in preparing for exams uh, and to get into the best school over there rather than enjoying holidays so it was quite a and this one but one advantage is thing advantage of this roaming the entire such big nation which is thrice the size of uh, south africa is that i could see and interact with different cultures understand different people meet different people and so on so personally you you cannot distinguish me as a born in southern india but you can't call me as a south indian or a north indian i am an indian basically basically i roamed everyone and i understood and interacted with most of the uh, places so that was my journey and one thing it made me is i never had very close best friends and so on that knack of uh, friendship and uh, bonding and so on so that is what me and my two sisters uh suffered from this but anyways uh, going further uh this is my family this is my paternal side uh, that's my great grandmother my grandfather grandmother this is my maternal grandfather and grandmother uh, and uh, 
this is these are my parents my father and my my late mother uh, uh mr virbhadraya karpurmat and mansa karpurmat and uh, few things about my father man of very few words very very few words and highly principled person and um he is my role model then this is my brother in law uh, that is uh, uh, my sister shweta and his family my brother in law uh, my brother in law serves the indian air force as a wing commander and that's me and my wife that's my sister uh, vijaya and my nephew uh, shashi and uh, shreyas and that's my elder brother who also has uh, who actually takes care of the farms and it's because of him that my our ancestral property is still intact and this is my maternal side uh, my mother's uncle and uh, he was one of the closest and uh, if you say i am the first person to get phd in my uh, family then you're wrong he way back he was a sanskrit scholar and a phd scholar and got a phd so this is my family a small family basically and uh, uh, four siblings to my uh, parents and my mother passed away in 2018 uh, due to renal failure okay one more thing i need to acknowledge over here that is it is because of my two sisters especially vijaya that i was able to go places and pursue my career because she stayed back to take care of my ailing mother and support my father so i duly acknowledge her i also would like to acknowledge my wife who stood by me by thick and thin throughout my phd career especially in south africa uh, uh during my difficult times and uh, and that's my uh, uh my brother's wife uh, and uh, my nephew's mother okay so going to this is my small family uh, from my father's side and going to my in-laws family that is it's a big family like it's like you know if you have a function there are like you know almost 70 80 people it's not the first circle inner circle is 70 80 people so this big well knitted close knitted family full of lawyers so you can't argue with them so that's what i can say so <laughs> and uh, some of them uh, very prominent lawyers uh, and uh, and well educated family and these are my humble uh, father in law uh, and my mother in law and uh, that's the elder sister of my uh, and that is my co brother uh, my wife's brother uh, pujit and puneet here and and the next generation over here cousins next generation so that's me i would like to just now take you towards my growing up days school days from 1979 to 1995 so that is when i did my schooling so this is one of the rare pictures of me and my sister taken in uh, panvel in mumbai and this is in andhra pradesh as i travel different places and this is these are some of the remote places of india believe me some remote places when i say that even if you want to buy a uh, uh like in a a broomstick yeah. then you may have to travel almost around 1 hour so that i am talking about uh, in 1980s badrachalam and kotagodam and that's interior andhra and orissa and all very remote places sometimes you may see documentaries where the tribals have the rings over the neck and uh, this one so i have seen all that so remote places and in this remotest place i forgot to inform you that my father is uh, is a mechanical engineer and his uh, duties took us all over india and uh, these are some of the projects that were built then when india was under uh, heavy restrictions from the west and uh, this was one of the place where the deteriorated water for nuclear power station was built so that was in manguru and similarly like uh, refineries hydrothermal power projects and so on so along with him we traveled this is my school days uh, i am here if you can see me and this is one of the my favorite photo that is my brother myself and this is the young this is the photo that i can find uh, and this is my mother beautiful mother and my father my two best friends uh, piyush and uh, jandeep and uh, uh, that's myself in mumbai and this is my metric where i was and uh, uh, that's me over here 
these are two my mother's uh, 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 mother's uh, brothers, younger brothers, and that's my brother over there. So me, my brother staying back in the village actually never allowed me to have very, did not give me an opportunity. We were very close, but because of me, me and my sisters going out with my uh, parents, my, my brother stayed back uh, with my grandparents and that's how we grew over there. So I miss that having that bond and I'm sure we'll make an effort to do that. So from there in 1995 to 2003, I was in, uh, I joined uh, Kaley College to do my pharmacy and this is Karnataka uh, University in Dharwad. So one of the oldest universities in India and to that was affiliated Kaley College of Pharmacy then. And I did my undergraduate and postgraduate over there. And this is for postgraduate, I joined Raju Gandhi University of Health Sciences and again, continuing studying in my uh, college, but this college was affiliated to these two universities. This is the hostel where I stayed uh, during my undergraduate and uh, postgraduate studies. I stayed there. Subsequently, after 2003, I went to, I was looking for, uh, between this, uh, I went and did some lecturing at Dayanand Sagar College of Pharmacy in Bangalore. But uh, after a short stint over there, I always wanted to come back to research. And I got an opportunity to uh, give an interview at National Chemical Laboratory. And as a uh, master in pharmaceutical sciences, I could join as an SRF senior. Uh, I was eligible to join a senior research fellow over there. So there I was introduced by one of my um, uh, known person, Sangmesh Kumbar, uh, who's now uh, the professor at University of Connecticut. And he introduced me over here, and that's how I landed up in NCL. And uh, one of the top research institutes then and even now. I All I could say is that an institute where uh, big companies like DuPont, Merck, BSF, and many other uh, uh, things, uh, many other big uh, projects would uh, run over there. And an institute that can, that used to shell out somewhere around 75 to 100 patents a year. So, and, and it was established in somewhere in 1948. And I joined uh, Professor Ravinder Tiwari's group. And Professor Tiwari used to work on uh, uh, transfer RNA. Um, and these was my NCL days. So this is where I used to sit and my professor used to sit over here. And we had a very nice bonding then. And this is Sandeep Kaledonkar. My, we were the only two students, but he did not like a bigger group. So he used to train us personally how to do these things, uh, the computational work as well as uh, 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 then. So then we used to handle uh, high computing uh, uh, softwares and so on. And he used to teach us how to do the codon like photon and so on. But uh, I had to leave uh, because I wanted to be an organic chemist and could not take the biophysics as such. So Sandeep went to Ohio and then uh, joined the uh, Josin Frank in uh, Columbia University who won the Nobel uh, Prize. And uh, he's now back in IIT Mumbai as a professor. And uh, and this is my close friend, Jay Surya, who visited me when I was in NCL. Another friend of mine, uh, uh, Dr. Sharan Kumar Shetty. And this is myself uh, in a bioinformatics lab, which was newly then in 1990, uh, 2004, it was inaugurated. This is Professor Ano, uh, Alok Sen. Uh, he's an entomologist. He had a very big impact due, uh, in my life and uh, a very humble person uh, and a very great scientist as an ent entomologist. So what did I do? Well, basically in uh, tRNA, this is basically we know that uh, transfer RNA is responsible for synthesizing various uh, proteins, like, you know, synthesizing proteins. Basically, each transfer RNA attaches one amino acid and protein synthesis take place. So among this, uh, uh, the codon, uh, anticodon loop and in the, uh, this muron, this, this wobble loop and variable arm loop, there are some naturally occurring modified nucleosides. 
and we were investigating the what is the role of these modified nucleosides and how do they which occur naturally and which occur due to mutations and how it contributes to the stability of the structure of tRNA and so on. So basically, it was a biophysics kind of a subject which involved both computing and uh, uh, mathematics and chemistry knowledge. Somehow, I could not, honestly speaking, I could not uh, grasp it after two years and I was trying to reach and but uh, I want always wanted to become an organic chemist. I'll tell you why I wanted to become an organic chemist or a medicinal chemist. So subsequently, I left and then uh, Sandeep also left in this. Then uh, we left the group and it was a very painful departure from my supervisor and uh, he did uh, insist on in staying. But uh, uh, we we parted in good ways and I'm still in contact with him. I hope he's listening to my talk now. Going forward, these are my early days in uh, uh, Durban. That is 2006 to 2008. I arrived in South Africa uh, on 4th August 2006. And these are some of my early day pictures. I think this was first year uh, um, uh, in 2006. Uh, I guess it was... Uh, um, I think, year-end party for the department. And that is where you can see Professor Kubnali there, Zarina there, Anita. Uh, this is Kubnali's group then. And this was my first uh, Christmas party at Kubnali's house in 2007, I guess. And uh, this is uh, myself with uh, my very good friend and uh, uh, friend Jean, uh, uh, who is also uh, a mechanical engineering in uh, uh, at UKZN. And uh, this is Elizabeth, who was our uh, my neighbor. And this is was my uh, Mohammed Altaib, who was my roommate. Karen and Richard, uh, where we used to quite often meet at their place uh, uh, for fun, basically, with Jean and everyone. So things were going very nice till then. And, uh, but you know, sometimes things are uh, took a different turn all of a sudden. So in 2008, uh, without going much in details and with due respect to everyone, uh, my relationship with my supervisor soared to an extent that I was asked to leave the uh, lab and I was asked to quit and leave the lab. And those were some of the, just to uh, why these two years were most crucial and important is because uh, they were almost nerve breaking that cornered me to, an, to a thing that where I thought that this is the end of it. I couldn't um, go back because I had already spent so much of time. And before joining this lab, I had offer from uh, Korean Institute of Science and Technology, KAIST, and I had University of Sydney, uh, 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 under Mary Chibib to work on uh, uh, neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, and then I had another uh, from uh, uh, Europe. But I left all that and I came over here. Uh, but things did not work. And by that time, all these offers were uh, not valid. So these were my beautiful lab mates then, Edwan, uh, a very nice human being, but uh, uh, I don't know. I think he's doing well now. This is Sitole. These were my two lab mates then uh, when I joined that lab, basically with nothing, just uh, this uh, this one. This is Munisila and uh, Har uh, Harsha and so on. And these are two of my friends whom I can never forget for what they have done and stood by me all throughout and supported me in, in all ways. When I say in all ways, means always, in all the ways. Another family, JP and Jane, I can't forget them, and especially JP, who was then pursuing his mechanical engineering at UKZN. I was, when I say I was, I didn't have any scholarship, I was broke, I didn't have anything to this one. So I was looking for any opportunities and I applied everywhere here and there to do, get some sort of money. The only money I would get was a little bit from demonstration and that was not sufficient. And by then I was also married and my wife was with me. So we had really a very difficult time then. So when this, during conversation, I spoke to uh, JP, and JP was actually uh, teaching chemistry at uh, 
emergency medical services uh, uh, services in duty the urban of technology he said that i don't have any much time so i need to i need uh, I, because i'm in final year why don't you take this and i was just waiting for that opportunity and I, that's what i took but life was not then easy as well because i had moved to a lab where there was nothing much other than uh, some things donated by uh, fellow colleagues whom i'm going to acknowledge now and uh, uh uh, there i met uh, some few good people uh, one of the most p- person whom i remember was yoga naidu uh, who un- who appointed me there and that was the earning that actually sustained me and my wife all throughout my acknowledgement of me being appointed and applying for ukzn was uh, was an motivation by uh professor chandra then visiting a faculty at uh, ukzn in in civil engineering department he is a distinguished professor from iit kanpur and a very humble down to down to earth person and has always guided me whenever i need it so it was his inspiration like no don't say no if you don't apply you don't get do apply so it is then i applied at the last minute uh i took a, i wrote an email to the hr saying that i want to apply would you mind giving me an extension they said okay you submit the hard copy on it was friday you submit a hard copy on on uh, monday and that is how uh, i gave my hard copy uh, not just applied uh, if you get it get it because i was i was applying everywhere else some of the people during this time uh, who assisted me uh, who stood by me and who have contributed in my journey especially during those difficult times are these people first the postgraduate union rep uh, uh, jason uh, who uh, jason he stood by me and tried to mediate between me and my supervisors as a postgraduate representative but did not work out and then he also and then the munik marx uh, what should i say about this lady she is a very well known internationally known academically A social activist and an environmentalist apart from that uh, a very good human being so she called up uh, then the dean andrew kindness and my supervisor and then andrew kindness called me in and spoke to me and he gave me a time of one more year to finish my phd these were difficult times at this time sai took care of my expenses then and i had a roof over my head at that time so did nizam assisted as and when required one incident that i can't forget is joe grant joe grant is a very wonderful person he is a heart of gold and i remember my wife was joining me for the first time and i didn't know have means to go to the airport so he said i i i he came he came he picked me up and while coming back he quietly touched my hand and slid few hundred rands in my hand and said keep it i said why i said just keep it so i could understand i i i he understood what i was going through at that time but then i returned and i said thank you very much but that was a very touching gesture for me sibu singh Sibu Singh, uh, Professor Sibu Singh, uh, he gave me uh, when I moved to the lab, other lab. I had literally no desktop, no printer, nothing, and I had only uh, 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 nothing actually. So he gave me a printer, he gave me a screen, and then he gave me, and then I, uh, Kishore uh, took me to the uh, staff uh, where there were some old computers. I took up some old, few old computers and fixed them together, and that's how I started my. Um, uh, I I made a setup. Professor Neil Kubanali has been my mentor all throughout, and I'm one of those lucky ones who who has the support, and uh, who had his support as a mentor, giving me directions. and what to do and what not to do and giving me an honest opinion about it and many a times no means no it was no professor vincent naimori professor bala professor fanzel thank you very much for allowing me to be at the uh, in your lab to work and complete my phd i know the space was a big problem then 
and uh, you still allowed me and I really enjoyed working with. My another mentor is Professor Tirumala Govanda, who has been my mentor in the discipline of pharmaceutical sciences when I joined over there. And ever since she has been uh, guiding me in many ways. And then, and that is what I have. It is not just these people, Prof. Andrew Kindness and everyone. It's not just these people. There are several other people I can name in, in their own little ways. Also, Professor Fernando Albrecht, um, uh, other people in the chemistry department, and most importantly, the technical support staff who opened their doors to me, who understood me and understood my situation. And it was Malini who gave me the rotary evaporator. Believe me, it's a 1970s rotary evaporator, still working and still doing a very good job. And we still all use it. And it's my one of the favorite instruments in that. So that was, it's still there with, uh, and I'm using it. Like that, Greg, Saroj, uh, Anita, uh, the, I would say, and others, everyone in uh, the the support staff was so good to me and uh, and assisting me. So in my PhD, I actually dedicated my PhD to these people, and uh, I am ever thankful to you all, guys, you all people, uh, and beautiful souls and uh, people. Thank you very much, once again. Some happy moments during this time. Karen's Rachel was born at that time, so I used to spend more time with uh, with these kids, and it used to bring a little bit of uh, solace uh, and peace uh, with the Monique's uh, kids and uh, James over there visiting him sometime whenever I got a chance. And these were some of the good uh, things that I uh, that uh, gave me some space to breathe and and move on. So I got married in two thousand nine. And uh, some happy moments or encouragements, I could say, is my first supervision was independent supervision was a bunch of uh, uh, honor students in 2011, uh, while I, I had still not submitted my thesis. And uh, they came as first, and this is what they gave, so, uh, the beautiful, kind words. So this was in 2016, just I, I, in 2013, I graduated, and 2016, uh, I was in top 30. Uh, researchers. So this was one of the programs that was there. And again, in 2021, again, top 30 researchers. And this is my students with whom I shared this. So some happy moments, there's several other happy moments. And being later on, uh, Dr. Rana's family, Kala Rana. Uh, and then there is other expat Indians, Sridhar Lakshmi Narayana family, and, and many other families who assisted me in, uh, uh, and we grew. And uh, and who were there for me. Like. So this was the journey of my uh, uh, journey thus far. And then as an academic, I started my journey, just being just a small uh, quote. In the vast orchestra of life, small molecules play the role of mighty conductors, orchestrating the symphony of health and disease. So that was my, uh, why, uh, I, because small molecules did play a vital role, and that is just a small quote. So my research focus area uh, is into basically a, a trained organic chemist. So I do a little bit of methodology, uh, target-based drug designing, and biosensors. Please note that uh, I apply methodology to make new building blocks that I utilize for medicinal chemistry and medicinal and also uh, and in materials in material sciences. So I'll be just taking up a few uh, of my important works then, and we'll be uh, taking you quickly through that. So chemistry, as we just do all those people, mind you that we may get a little bit technical uh, for those uh, who are not do not have chemistry background. So chemistry is basically divided into inorganic, organic, and physical. And I basically focus on medicinal chemistry, and then there's organic metallic phytochemistry and so on. My focus is on medicinal chemistry, which is developing new molecules to treat diseases. So the building blocks, most of your chemistry, or I would say organic chemistry is between carbon and hydrogen and nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. So these are just joined together by covalent bonds. 
and you can make ring structures you can make long alkyl chains and all sometimes to make certain specialized molecules we also use certain metals like uh, palladium or uh, or ruthenium or certain as catalyst which assist in building molecules so going from there molecules that we played were isatins quinazolin these are the different kinds of molecules that i played over the years and uh, 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 and uh, achieved some of the successes and and doing so. So, metrology. Sorry. So, organic chemistry and metrology. I'm going to take it take this lecture through metrology, medicinal chemistry, and uh, biosensors, and that is where I will conclude. So, our latest work was on CH activation, and why do we do uh, CH activation? So, CH activation is basically. Um, swapping hydrogens from adjacent or where desired uh, uh, carbon. We know that usually the skeleton of a molecule is carbon and each carbon is attached to a hydrogen. And it is not easy to take out a hydrogen from here or insert a molecule. So, so, so CH activation is an uh, is a chemistry science within it uh, within organic chemistry, which is uh, which is quite going quite popular as of now. So what is CH activation? It is a transformative process in synthetic organic chemistry where carbon hydrogen bonds are selectively cleaved and replaced by new functionalities, typically by a catalyst. Or it can be a mechanistic step involving direct cleavage of carbon hydrogen bond that occurs due to interaction of transition metal, uh, the results in a new metal bond. So basically breaking off this, okay. so. Why do CH activation? Because it is very uh, important uh, and from pharmaceutical chemistry point of view, and it gives a lot of flexibility to uh, for the medicinal chemists to insert uh, certain functional groups or molecules directly without going through a lot of multi-steps. But it has to be specifically planned and a particular carbon, if you want to activate or attach something, it has to be activated. So in 1995, we just had around 100 papers, but in 2023, there's 15 times on CH activation. Our work, so if you look into, if I want to give a, just uh, an example, so marithacumone is a natural product and it, the total synthesis involves around 15 molecule, 15 steps or 12 to 15 steps. But the same molecule can be, through CH activation, can be done in fewer number of steps that is maybe in two to three steps you can basically do by using uh, different catalysts. So that is the importance of uh, CH activation in this. And our work is this. Uh, and this was done by Sachin Moite and my collaborator Milan Bera, uh, a good old friend and a collaborator. So what we did over here is palladium catalyzed regio, uh, regio divergent uh, basically insertion of olefination of imidazo 12 a pyridine and why we did this because we wanted a scaffold uh, for our anti-TB drug development we wanted a scaffold to work on this so we wanted to insert uh, uh, some olefination and branch and branch olefination to occur at uh, at the c2 position over here and uh, so that's how we wanted to uh, do do that but as you know olefination or uh, attaching an olefin group or any aliphatic group is very difficult as compared to the aromatic region. So we use certain uh, palladium estate as a catalyst and then uh, uh, palladium estate and any olefins and we were able to uh, insert the branched and linear selective and branch, uh, branched olefination that took place over here. And we got some excellent results and uh, lean, uh, linear selectivity and bond, sub bond substrate groups like. So one of the th uh, thing about this is that we also carried out some kinetic studies and these are the crystal structures. And this was recently accepted in Euro Chemistry European Journal. And to share with you is that uh, it was the editor has accepted as, as one of the hot uh, article in, in that issue. So this work was done by uh, in my lab uh, in collaboration with Milan Bera, who's at MIT University, India. So my relationship with Milan Star goes back uh, uh, in 2015. And this was our first work 
of synthesis of 1,4 benzox designs. And he was my first PhD student, Sivanandan Karunanadi. And here, what we did is using metal salts and base and uh, in estonite trial, we were able to uh, cyclize uh, and get 1,4 benzoxazine uh, moieties using uh, cheaper catalyst and uh, a reliable base, like you know, cheaper base. So we also synthesized in this uh, both five, six, uh, seven, eight membered rings we could introduce here. We unfortunately it got in published in uh, our uh, in Journal of Heterocycles, where it what happened is that there was a certain delay in for us to communicate the paper. And on the same uh, theme, uh, the pub, uh, there came a publication, Organic Letters, in the same year. So thus, we lost and we had to publish it in a lower impact journal in Journal of Heterocyclic Chemistry. Going further, uh, we did some uh, uh, work. This is Nisar and uh, Sele Zamani Z. They worked in synthesizing quinazolinones, and we were and we were looking for quinazolinones for as a DNA gyrase inhibitors, or and we wanted certain scaffolds, and this is what uh, uh, we uh, was achieved by a domino reaction towards achieving quinazolin quinazolin moieties. So we took some uh, uh, halo uh, amides and we reacted them with copper iodide, cesium carbonate, and alcohol. Uh, in microwave, we were just in 10 minutes, we would get this cyclized product as quinose, substituted quinazolinones in conventional way in four hours. So imagine we just use some basic, uh, some mild basis and an alcohol, and we were able to get this. And, and uh, we published this work in, in European Journal of Organic Chemistry then. So going further, we did some more work in organic chemistry uh, that is uh, a synthesis of your oxazine uh, 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 moieties, that is uh, benzoxazine moieties. So benzoxazine is a very important scaffold. Uh, if you look into levofloxacin, uh, uh, azertone, which is a serotonin antagonist, and uh, uh, bomardan, which is a vasodilator agent, these are some very important, if you look into here, important scaffold, and we were able to achieve it in a very green process and green without using any uh, uh, any expensive catalyst. We just took some amino alcohols and aldehyde, some phenacyl bromides in ethanol, in alcohol, and uh, mild base K2CO3 uh, at, room, uh, at room temperature. In one hour, uh, we would get this, uh, six hours, we would get this molecules. And we we got some trans dice, uh, major as a, a cis, as a, a diastereoselective. Uh, as a major product and the minor product, we could we were optimized. We optimized it to get the major product as, as a cis product as a major product. So this work was done by Nardeshwar Kushwa. Uh, so going further, uh, we did some our some of our latest work in collaboration with our colleague uh, Parvesh Singh over here and uh, some of the students whom we co-supervised. We did some trans amidation and amide bond is a very unreactive bond. And uh, amide chemistry is very common chemistry in heterocyclic chemistry and also in peptides and everything. So one of the biggest thing is uh, substituting or reacting, making the amides reactive or uh, attach, uh, attaching some substitution to the amides. The one way you could do is trans amidation is through by swapping uh, uh, this one. So we did some of the molecules uh, here and it was done by, here are some of the examples. Uh, which was done by Vishal Kumar, Pankaj, Sanjeev Singh, and in collaboration. So we synthesized, and these are the molecules, and we published a series of uh, publications in uh, in Tetrahedron, European Journal of Organic Chemistry, and uh, Synthetic Communications, Chemistry Select, and Organic and Biomolecular Chemistry as well. Um, going forward, uh, this was another uh, work which was done by Majid, and here we synthesize some triazolotriazine because we wanted to develop some anti-cancer drugs, anti-cancer uh, molecules for uh, uh, which could be substituent for uh, your purines and pyrimidines. And that is how we wanted to get these uh, molecules. And this was one of the uh, way where we took um, the triazine hydride and uh, benzaldehyde and in NBS method, we, we were able to get this triazolotriazine in good high yields. And that is a work. One of our highlights of this was uh, um, uh, was Nisar, where we this was patented and we also got uh, some uh, grant to take it to commercial uh, pilot plant scale. So 
our pres uh, this is the oxazole two oxazoline monomer which is a widely used for uh, uh, in many from tire industries to drug delivery to uh, uh, in the it, basically it is used to make polymers and we were able to uh, synthesize one pot synthesis of two oxazoline by just using amino alcohols uh, uh, your uh, basically amides and uh, uh, substituted uh, uh, halo alcohols and in one pot synthesis we used to get this and we optimized this reaction and we got some TIA grant on this and we have taken it to the uh, technology transfer to the pilot plant scale. So this was done initially started by Nisar and he established this and then followed by other several other people work now uh, including Sachin and Srinivas Wangara and so on they all uh, worked on this uh, molecule and now we are into the second phase of taking it to the uh, pilot plant scale. So medicinal chemistry, I'm kind of going to talk about the other section is the medicinal chemistry that I'm going to talk about now that is what is medicinal chemistry? Medicinal chemistry, as I said, from organic chemistry, I use the building blocks. I used to make new molecules or new bricks or building blocks that can I can utilize it to make uh, certain uh, um, uh, potent molecules uh, that can have some pharmacological effect. So medicinal chemistry relies, heavily relies on the information from uh, uh, biochemists, structural biologists, organic chemists, uh, molecular uh, biologists, and so on, basically life science people. And he takes the information, all that information, and build, tries to build a molecule that can show some uh, pharmacologically uh, active molecule uh, against a particular disease of interest. So it's an orchestra. It's not one person and uh, uh, doing everything. The information is uh, taken from different sources. So it, just to give you a brief, like uh, for a drug to come into the market, it takes probably uh, 20 years or something like that. So some of the to give you further perspective, like, you know, if you take into the trees, it is the medicinal chemist, synthetic chemist, all these people come together, biologists, computational, computational chemists come together to make new molecules, uh, bioactive molecules, uh, uh, and various other uh, chemical entities for different applications. In case of medicine, uh, in drug discovery process is a very tedious and time consuming and long process. So, Every year, millions of molecules are reported as active, but very few come uh, reach the uh, target or reach the end to be marketed as a drug. So it could be like few millions and only one or two reach. So to give you a more better prospect about this, basically biomolecular targets is uh, the information is taken from biologists. So we do some high throughput screening and we synthesize some molecules and screen them against the targets, lead molecules. And from the lead molecules, the preclinical studies is done from preclinical. If it passes the preclinical, then uh, clinical studies, cl clinical trials are conducted. And then it is regulated by FDA uh, uh, or human trials and so on. This entire process of drug discovery may, if today, if there is a drug that is discovered or very potent, it may come into the market only in next 10 to 15 years. So that is what uh, is a very tedious, long process uh, of drug discovery. So why drug discovery? Like, you know, why drugs discovery is important? Because drugs, basically, even if I take an aspirin or ibuprofen or paracetamol or any drug, and each drug has its own, uh, I may have certain side effect that you may not have, you may have certain side effect or you might be perfectly okay. So some people uh, uh, benefit the uh, get beneficial uh, uh, effect but may have toxicity some may have a benefit of no toxicity and some may have no benefit no toxicity uh, 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 and some may have no benefit but toxicity so our human bodies also react to these chemical entities in a different way and that's why we always need to optimize the drugs and to have newer drugs in place so in synthetic medicinal chemistry, over the years, I have established a well drug discovery lab where we do the synthesis, we do biosensor applications, and we do computational work. We have a small computational group 
of Zikona, and Th- and Ms. Thembe, and Dr. Vincent, who hold the computational work. We have established uh, antibacterial cell culture and also anti-TB work at NHLS. So we are able to do these things uh, uh, very smoothly uh, in our lab. So how we design molecules, basically, I uh, in uh, medicinal chemistry, I use hybridization approach. It's a very simple concept. There's a part of molecule, the molecule that is uh, uh, active, and in that molecule, a part of the molecule is active, and another part of the mo- in another drug, another part of the molecule is active. They all have some desired effect, so we bring them together and we join them in one single frame, and that is molecular hybridization. For this, we also take uh, the help of machines, that is computational uh, work, designing, then analyzing it, and so on. So molecular hybridization is link. Either you link two active molecules or you uh, synthesize it in such a way that the 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 the, the, the st- in one structural frame both the uh, 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 the desired entities or structural entities are, or function groups are present in the one structural frame so that is molecular hybridization and with this i have had some successes some failures but today i'm going to show most about my successes so drug discovery, this is what it is, what we do in our lab as of now, design, synthesize, characterize, do some in vitro studies. And we have sent some of our molecules to our collaborators for the in vivo studies and in in vitro cell culture. We haven't attained, gone to clinical studies as yet. So my focus area and medicinal chemistry as a researcher itself is tuberculosis. And to just to give you a mini, uh, uh, if you just Google it, you'll see that TB is one of the second largest killer in the world, around basically 1.13 million people suffering from tuberculosis. Secondly, in this country, tuberculosis and HIV is causing havoc. And uh, it is very much need, urgently needed to design and synthesize new molecules. So how does the TB effect, just to give you for those people, young minds over here and uh, from non-chemists or non-biologist people, TB is basically one of the most common route of infection is to inhaling the droplets. One hit, once you inhale the droplets, the first defense uh, line of defense mechanism is your, your uh, phagosomes, or phagosomes, which basically engulf your uh, your uh, uh, foreign uh, bacteria and digest them. And then sometimes what happens is these uh, bacteria themselves or the phygosomes, they leach or break into the uh, lung parenchyma. They get into the lung parenchyma. And then sometimes they also, uh, the dendritic cells which are present, which are responsible, they also migrate. And this migration leads to the the uh, immune response, the first immune response. And these uh, uh, macrophages, once they enter the lung parenchyma, then they affect uh, the different cells and they form a thick nodule called gloma- granular mass. Now, this granular mass, it is this granular mass where the slow growing bacteria basically grows slowly and over a period of time. And uh, uh, and then when the growth of bacteria is uh, excessive uh, in that, then it bursts open and then it then it affects the various organs. So this is uh, the way the TB infects. Going further, why TB is so? There are various several reasons, like you know, why we don't have, why many drugs are ineffective against TB. One of the major role is because of uh, your, your cell wall. In the cell wall, you have multiple components of the cell wall. And if you look into just for any layman, if by visualization itself, you'll come to know that mycobacterial cell wall is thick, rigid, and multi-layered having different components, like mycolic acid is one of that, arbinogalactin is another thing, and then you have peptoglycan barrier, and then the cell membrane. So a drug has to pass through all these barriers to enter into the cytoplasma to show its effect. And that's the reason most of the, uh, what we call it as molecules, which are drugs, uh, they act as, uh, they, they, are, they, they are ineffective against uh, uh, the my- mycobacteria. And remember, we are still using most of the drugs that are uh, that were discovered in 1960s. To give you a perspective, in 2023, only bedaquiline, delaminate, and petronamate were the only drugs which were uh, approved by the regulated market. And these are still in clinical trials. I'll not go much in detail in this case. Now, 
what was our contribution as i said i will tell you my story why apologies, i wanted to become an organic prof. chemist apologies prof uh, i see you still have uh, i mean you're on 47 of slide 94 if you can yes. now please. yes i'll be I quick yes i'll be quick yes yes thank you so much yeah, I'll, thank you yeah uh this is professor gadad uh, under whom I train, I, I got trained as a uh, medicinal chemist, and uh, this is uh, Dr. Nulvi, under whom I worked as an assistant during my masters. And in my masters, I did some imidazo tri uh, trifluoromethyl imidazo thiazole moieties as anti tubercular agents. And this work was published in uh, Biogenic Medicinal Chemistry while I was doing my masters. So that is how we did the work, and then. One of our work was done by, in the uh, recent work was in 2016 by Girish Hampan now, where we used curcumin, that is your turmeric, the half degradant of curcumin to make the derivatives. And we wrote an extensive review article, which was, which is very well cited now. And uh, a lot of people, we get a lot of citations. We use this half degradant of curcumin to make some uh, beautiful molecules, which, and these were the molecules that were made. And uh, we got some very good hits like uh, M with MIC of uh, 0.48 micromolar against even against resistance strain, INH resistance strain, isoniazid fluoroquinolone resistance strains. The next work was, uh, so these, as you say, C is our uh, the ballistic activity data, where it shows that even uh, with respect to levofloxacin, le rifampicin marketed drugs, our molecules were very uh, active. So against resistance strain of fluoroquinolones and so on. So going forward, I, if I say about uh, this was the work that was patented where we designed some isatin kind of molecules. And this was recently published in uh, Biogenic Chemistry where we did some molecular hybridization of isatin with uh, uh, with thiamorphalin and so on. So this was patented. Further, uh, we did some pharmacologic evaluations and the previous molecules were cytotoxic and these molecules were not cytotoxic. So that's where we could go further and patent. And currently both of those molecules are in um, um, studies uh, for animal evaluations and to uh, detect the uh, which gene they modify or upregulate or downregulate uh, uh, gene modification and so on. So antimicrobial agents, these are some of the contributions from our group. Uh, 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 where we got some really good molecules, but uh, we could not go further. So these are the contributions from other people in, in antimicrobacterial agents and then antimicrobial agents uh, and so on. Similarly, we work, and this was another, our latest, where the molecules have shown uh, uh, MRSA activity that is greater than, uh, uh, greater than or equivalent to vancomycin. So this is our latest unpublished work thus far. So our contribution to the TB were these, uh, these, uh, these molecules, which are yet to be published and some patented and uh, another published. So this is our contribution to TB drug discovery. So in malaria also we worked, I'll not go into, I'll skip the uh, introduction. And uh, in malaria, uh, Francis was joining me from Zambia over here, has come personally for this. We'd, did in collaboration with uh, uh, Professor Naimuri. Uh, he was a co-supervisor of this, and we did some, uh, uh, designed some hybrid molecules, which have shown some very good promising activity. And now these molecules have gone for uh, screening against the resistant strains and other uh, parasitic organisms. So some computational work that we did that uh, where we targeted the chaperones in this uh, molecule and it uh, it was in in um, in agreement with our experimental data so cancer drug discovery uh, i will because of the time i'm going to skip some of the slides over here we worked extensively on kinesin spindle protein and this is basically uh, affects your uh, uh, it's a motor protein that is that is responsible for segregation of your chromosomes during mitosis. So basically, there are several kinase families, and one of them is uh, KSP or EG5. Bala and Samkile Khati uh, worked on this molecules, and we did some wonderful work in collaboration with Frank Kojeski 
where this is the uh, the description of the motor protein that is uh, KSP protein, and uh, this is the binding site, uh, ADP binding site, and uh, our we discovered synthesize some analogs. And uh, based on this uh, clinical uh, uh, molecules that were in clinical studies, and what we contributed, though our molecules were not active, but what we did was the K858, which was a racemic mixture, which was a chiral molecule, we co-crystallized it uh, with the enzyme. Uh, uh, and then we were able to identify that the R isomer was much more active than the S isomer. So this was one of the contributions of ours with uh, to uh, in cancer uh, drug discovery. So these are other people who worked extensively on cancer molecules and uh, had got some good results. Um, one of our last work in collaboration was uh, 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 combining uh, your captopril with, which is an antihypertensive drug with with uh, quercetin, which is quercetin is an antioxidant. And you know that anti uh, antihypertensive drugs are widely prescribed and many because of uh, for regulating the blood pressure, and this have adverse effects on the renal and also building up free radicals. And also, we combined the captopril with quercetin and looked into its safety profiles, and it was much better. Uh, the activity was retained and it showed better activity. And we did so, did do some animal studies and drug delivery studies. And this was published in International Journal of Pharmaceutical Sciences. So coming to my last thing, biosensors. Why do we need sensors? We are all surrounded by sensors. Like I said, this is the era of sensors where uh, the smell, smell, touch, feel, everything. But now these, these days we have devices where we develop this, where we cannot, we, where we don't need a human interventions. So we, this, we are all surrounded by sensors, wherever you walk, your uh, whatever you do, we are all surrounded by sensors and it's going to grow in, in coming years. So sensors basically has uh, the component of a sensor. We can detect anything. This is a, uh, 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 the components of a sensor. Basically, you have a bioreceptor, you have a transducer, your trans signal, amplifier, and output. And you can detect your drugs, forensic, microorganisms, food samples, environmental samples. And your bioreceptors can be your nucleoside cells or any macromolecules. And transducers can be any of, uh, it can be composite materials, nanomaterials, or it can be any of these uh, uh, synthesized materials. So just to give an example is your glucose sensor is an, uh, is an electrochemical sensor that is uh, used. And uh, this electrochemical sensor where you just put a blood and is a screen printed electrode and that uh, is, a, is a depiction of how the sensor works. Blood, glucose sensor, reference voltage, current voltage converter into micro uh, controller and ADC login and LCD display. So biosensor SMCRG, this is what is the setup what we have. Uh, in our lab and then going further is common electrochemical sensors is that is a, this is you know that the concept here is the basic science behind it sensor is in electrochemical sensor is every organic molecule any molecule when put under potential undergoes oxidation reduction and oxidation reduction is nothing but uh, loss of electrons of uh, a gain of electrons. So oxidation reduction. So oxidation reduction is cyclic, cyclic voltammogram, basically oxidation and then reduction. So each molecule gives a distinctive peak which you can maintain, which you can catch, uh, uh, which appear at certain uh, potential. Then you have potential voltammetric where we are, apply potential and this is the, the conductivity can be uh, measured, the potential can be measured, okay, voltammetric. Um, so I'm going to go very quickly in this. What we have done this far, in the, we have used biomarkers to detect certain medicines like L-DOPA, dopamine and all. Why do we do that? Because to detect, have a handheld device to detect the counterfeit drugs or, uh, or to, for both qualitative and quantitative purpose. Drugs like acetaminophen and biomarkers like epinephrine, dopamine, prostate antigen, leishmania, uh, antigen bodies and all for detection. Then we did some MRSA work as well. So the materials that we use uh, were polymers, some we synthesized some nanocomposite materials, nanoparticles, and then metal organic frameworks. 
So this is our work, one of our very good work where we used uh, basically uh, copper salt, beta cyclodextrin and graphene oxide. And we synthesized uh, a, a composite material using trans uh, hydrothermal approach. And uh, uh, this was published in your sensors actuators. And this is how we did. We took, we synthesized your uh, cyclodextrin, uh, your composite material, cyclodextrin graphene oxide uh, um, uh, onto the glassy carbon electrode, vancomycin, and then it was able to detect the bind to the uh, MRSAs. And this is the detection, how each peak tells you about the detection. So once we have uh, 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 attached, the once the, the bacteria attaches, then basically it... Uh, uh, we see the uh, drop in the voltage, and that is how we uh, detect it. Okay, so some of other works by Zondi et al. in detecting two substances or uh, uh, two annulates in a single uh, preparation, and also in blood samples and so on. I'm not. I'm going to skip some of this, and then uh, this is how we synthesize some of the molecules like PANI. Uh, we use polymer uh, uh, PANI and uh, with the uh, uh, cobalt oxide and on uh, in combination, and that is how we were able to detect uh, some uh, annulates. So this work was done by uh, one of my postdoc uh, Venkates, uh, um, uh, and uh, where we did was electrochemical sensor for sensing dopamine. Dopamine is basically is a neurotransmitter, which is uh, when and when in, in case of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease, there's a uh, less production of dopamine and these are given as supplement. But to have a regulation uh, to at an optimal level of do dopamine is present in the blood, it is very important to detect it. So that's how uh, we use some of the, uh, your uh, uh, functionalized multi-carbon nanotubes. And uh, then we used uh, your, uh, 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 your uh, blue-violet molecules, poly-TB, uh, toluidine blue molecules, which polymerized and uh, we synthesized this as a composite material and uh, use them as for detecting the dopamine. So I'm. this is gold nano urchins, which was done by uh, uh, Elton. I'm going to skip it due to lack of time. And this, we have used iron from iron wool. We were able to make some nanocomposite materials which was used to detect certain uh, uh, the anti-cancer, the uh, uh, metotraxanone as an anti-cancer drug. So what our achievements thus far have been, we have this already, it's a teamwork. This is what is my achievements. And uh, face of UKZN has gone all over the globe. People have from who have graduated from here have gone to different places uh, in the world and are thriving. So these are my alumni, several, some of them are not here, but I try to acknowledge everyone, this peer alumina from my group. And this is the, some postdocs uh, over the years, some uh, master students here. And uh, my, I am thankful, the, I'm just the face over here. A lot of work is done by these hardworking students over here. This was my group in 2022, 2023. This is my group, current group now. In 21, 2022 was this group. And uh, this was way back in 2015. I started like this with some of the people. And this 2017, 2018. My, to all my collaborators, thank you. I've been all my part of my journey. Those who do not appear on this slide, that doesn't mean I have ignored them, but it is, uh, I, um, I truly value your support. Uh, and uh, it's been pleasure working thus far with you guys. And we continue working with all the collaborators in UKZN, in South Africa and, uh, and the rest of the world. Lastly, sorry, let's keep smiling. This is in the pursuit of knowledge. Through research, I traverse the sacred path of discovery, drawing closer to the divine wisdom that breathes life into creation. Thank you. And that's my beautiful family, which is my uh, anchor and support. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you so much, Prof. And congratulations on this wonderful achievement.
one can see a lot of work has gone into this and it's so difficult to capture all of this in one hour, but we thank you for having shared this wonderful journey that you've traveled with us. We also want to thank your family because your family has given you to us. Uh, they've allowed uh, 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 that we share you with them. Thank you so much to also your friends. We saw how you were supported by your friends, your students and everybody else that believed in you and uh, has made this journey possible. A special thanks to audiovisual department and corporate relations for all the logistical staff. We are really uh, uh, very excited, Prof, about the wonderful, uh, informative and inspiring uh, lecture that you gave. And we want to thank you for all the preparations that went into it. Uh, this lecture really took us through the personal and professional and academic journey. We learned a lot about your trials and tribulations as a scholar. We learned a lot about uh, everything that uh, you went through, where you come from, your humble beginnings, and how you've traveled to become this great professor that we see. We also learned a lot about all the people that have contributed to your career and uh, how detours, you did not allow the detours to take you away from your main focus. We are happy that today we were part of celebrating this special milestone. We thank you um, for gracing us. Um, I mean, uh, we learned a lot about your earlier work as well as an organic chemist and um, of late the work that you talked about, which was around CH activation as the latest med methodology, your me work in medicinal chemistry and drug, drug discovery, the special focus of your work on TB, malaria, and all the conditions that are really important for a developing country like South Africa and the rest of Africa. We are also excited to learn that some of your work has been patented. We really thank you for all your contributions and I can see you are very young. So a lot is still going to be achieved and we hope we can become part of that journey and support you to be the best version of yourself. With these words, I want to thank you all and also thank all the colleagues that have joined those that have joined uh, in person and those that may have joined virtually for having graced uh, uh, um, us with your presence. Thank you so much and goodbye.